Hello guys, I hope wherever you're watching us from, you're having a great time. This is Afri Post and welcome to today's video. Now, many times people have talked about how racism has affected black people and leaders across different fronts have come out to protect black society and work against system that is oppressing and eating up their rights. One of such leaders was Khalid Abdul Muhammad, well-renowned personality who was a member of the Nation of Islam and also became a member of the Black Panthers Party. Let's listen to this engagement that he had with Donahue in a show that really angered many white people. Let's watch and then react to it after the video. Muhammad, can you please tell me why it's blacks who are killing hundreds of thousands of blacks in, in Rwanda and other places? And can you please tell me why from Haiti, blacks from Haiti are just risking their lives to come here to the United States of America? I'll tell you if I get a chance. Black people have been robbed, as I said earlier, of a knowledge of self. And when you rob people, sir, of a knowledge of self, then it means that they, be, they start to take on the characteristics and the nature of their oppressor and their colonizer. And his mind, by automatic, systematic, remote control, rules in our people. He gives them the guns and the weapons and the drugs and the alcohol, the way you did our brothers, the red man and the red woman, brothers and sisters, the way you did our Latino brothers and sisters, and then you pit one against the other and then say, look at what these people are doing. Adolf Hitler perpetrated the Holocaust on 11 million people that died, 6 million of which were Jews, 5 million were others. Am I to understand that you would very much support his way of doing things and him for that matter? Sir, this is not reverse racism nor discrimination that you could tie into your statement on Hitler. If the slave master is whipping the slave and blood is running down the slave's back, and the slats, incidentally, where the term cracker comes from, from the cracker man who was crack, had the crack of the whip on the slave's back. But if the slave takes the slave master's whip from him and starts whipping the slave master with his own whip, that is not reverse racism, that is not reverse discrimination. That is the slave getting out from under the yoke of bondage and oppression. I don't advocate what Hitler has done before the world, Hitler's struggle. I went to the Holocaust Memorial Museum and I tried to separate Hitler as a freak of nature from the rest of white people. But after all that we have gone through, I know that there's a little bit of Hitler in all white people and a lot of Hitler. And we'll be back in just a moment. You love a man who randomly killed six people on a commuter train? I love Colin Ferguson just as much as the masses of white Americans love General Schwarzkopf, General Westmoreland, General Patton, General MacArthur, and Eisenhower. America awards her killers, and they get ribbons and stripes and bars. I'm sensitive to the pain and suffering of the loss of life on that train, but I'm one of the rebellious slaves. And so when black people stand up out of pain and suffering and frustration, I understand after 500 years. You also, uh, you talk about, uh, you talk about the uh, response of some uh, African Americans to, uh, for example, the book which... Uh, attempts to prove that the Jews are involved in the slave trade. I'd be happy to let them see that. Um, you talk about uh, when f white folks can't defeat you, you said in your speech at Cain, they'll always find some Negro, some boot-licking, butt-licking, buck-dancing, bamboozle, half-baked, half-fried, sissified, punkified, pasteurized, homogenized nigger that they can trot out in front of you. I would ask you, Mr. Muhammad, is Jesse Jackson a boot-licking, homogenized nigger? Yeah. To the best of his ability, I believe he tries every day to do that. Are you an entertainer, or are you a committed person to uh, black people? I'm so glad you asked that question. I believe that the liberation and salvation of the black nation must be brought about 
by black people gaining a thorough knowledge of self after our 500 to 6,000 year Holocaust where we have lost over 600 million. And so I believe that that education process must be a process of two steps, inspiration and information. So I seriously give information, but black people are a people of rhythm and spirit, so I also give inspiration. <laughs> From your speech at Kane College in 1960, uh, Chief uh, Luthuli, the head of the ANC, received a Nobel Peace Prize, you reported to your audience, reminded them, for nonviolent struggle. Yeah. Just like Mandela just received it with F.W. de Klerk. How could you stand with your oppressor and your enemy and receive the Nobel Prize for nonviolent struggle? You have, uh, you do not uh, support then uh, Nelson Mandela's uh, strategy in the struggle? to free black people in South Africa? Let us first of all for, uh, be very clear here, Phil. Nelson Mandela is my brother. So he is Jesse is a Jackson. member of the family, and so is Jesse, and Jesse is a very brilliant man. We just want him to return home and stop being used by the enemy and the oppressor against his people. Now back to Brother Nelson Mandela. And certainly we can never mention Nelson without mentioning Winnie Mandela. But Nelson Mandela's attempt at a multiracial government in South Africa after the murder of men, women, children, and babies, and the rape of South Africa, a criminal settler colony that has been established like Israel there in that part of the world. I cannot go along with one man, one vote. Let me say why. If someone broke into your home, Mr. Donahue, and actually bum-rushed your home, and black boots stomped your door down and came in and robbed and raped everyone in the household and was able to take the wealth of your home and parlay it into an empire. This is an invader. This is an intruder. This is a murderer. Right. This is a burglar. This is a criminal. So I ha you have no responsibility to share your home with them after they broke in and committed the crimes that they did. You want... Uh, you you said about South Africa, we give him, that is to say, white people, mm. 24 hours to get out, get out of town by sundown. That's all. If he won't get out of town by sundown, we'll kill every white that ain't right that's in sight in South Africa. We kill the women, we kill the children, we kill the babies, we kill the blind, we kill the cripple. We, we kill them all. We kill the faggot. We kill the lesbian. We kill them all. You say, why kill the babies in South Africa? Because they're going to grow up and oppress our babies, so we kill the babies. Are you seriously presenting yourself as a man interested in the future of your people with this kind of rhetoric? I'm just as interested in the freedom of my people as I am in the self-determination of the Kuji Chagulia, self-development, them being self-defining, self-respecting, and self-defending. If the white man has killed millions of our people, and you cannot deny right. the undeniable and indisputable and irrefutable truth, fact, proof, and history of their bloodshed there in South Africa, I said it would be merciful if they would leave. I don't agree with a government, a sham government. No man walks out of prison after 27 years and becomes the president unless there's a script and a plan behind the scenes to remove the economic sanctions from whites in South Africa. But no real plan for redistribution of the wealth. The Oppenheimers, the De Beers, and others, they're sucking the blood of our people. So I said, be merciful. Give them a period of time. Truman, Truman gave the Japanese a period of time. But when they didn't comply, he dropped the bomb on men, women, children, and babies. I make no apologies for that statement. I believe that the invasion of South Africa was an act of unprovoked war. One nation against another nation. And nations must fight for the self-determination. They had no business there, Mr. Donahue. Yes. Would you like to see Aristide uh, return to Haiti to his rightful, uh, duly elected position as president? From what I have learned and studied of President Aristide, from what I can see in those I've been privileged to talk to who are close to him, 
He appears to be a very sincere man. He appears to be a man who really loves our people there and wants to see our people breathe free and correct the problems that colonialism and other disruptions is very definitely at the root of. However, I feel I do not want to see my beloved brother, President Aristide, returned to Haiti by the power of a Bill Clinton. Because if Bill Clinton can help to return him there, he will always attempt to be the puppeteer who will pull the strings and try to dictate to my brother how he should carry out the affairs of government there. Mm -hmm. Your comments see, appear to bespeak a, uh, uh, a position, in, a political position, in which you have no interest at all in reaching out and, uh, and hoping and working for a, commu a multiracial community of harmony and peace. Do I, am I correct in saying you have, fors you have forsaken that ideal? My arms are tired, Phil. <laughs> We've reached out for 500 years. Too late now. We faced it? tanks. We faced water hoses and cattle prods. Vicious dogs bit the breast of black women off in those protest marches of the civil rights movement. Vicious four-legged dogs sicked on us by two-legged dogs, bit into the groin and the private parts of black men, women, and children. So, Mr. Donahue, I believe that the white man is absolutely disagreeable to live with in peace and that no one has been able to get along with him nowhere on the face 196,940,000 square miles of the planet Earth. And so you will continue this uh, rhetoric. You will continue using... And action. And action. Uh, uh, action. Uh, what kind of action? Strategy to affect what in the United States of America? Let's start well, with us. No wise general sits with a representative of the opposition to discuss battle strategy and battle plans before the entire world. I don't think that would be wise. Mm -hmm. But the mission of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the mission of my spiritual father, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, whom I love very much and I want to be in that number when he takes a million black men to Washington, D.C. to call for reparations and justice. Their work is a work of liberation and salvation. Their work is a work to raise the mentally and spiritually dead black man and woman right. after we have been robbed of our names, our language, our religion, our culture, our God, our folkways, mores, and robbed of a power, yeah. the power of our own yeah. being. Lift up the Pope's skirt to see what's under there. This is high school stuff. Words well, like faggot. It, 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 it's, an, it's an immature sort of failure to really get out of the old Beavis butthead kind of uh, environment. Certainly you can't be proud of this kind of uh, language that you use. Well, if it is high school, then Faggot? the Bible, Faggot? let's listen for a second, <laughs> the Bible speaks of lifting up the skirts of the garment. Oh, I'm surprised that you feel it's a metaphor. It's symbolic language. I'm not at all interested in what is under the Pope's clothes. I'm not into that. <laughs> it's a metaphor. Let's see, see what's, what's under there. Let's but see it is what's a under metaphor there, to say, let us expose the Pope. According to H. Shelton Smith, President Emeritus of Duke University, in his book entitled, In His Image, quote, the Catholic Church and the Pope were directly involved in the institution of slavery. They financed slavery and gave the okay that it was good business to sell Africans. Lift up the skirts of his garment so that we can see the shame and reveal what has been hidden. But it has nothing to do with sexuality whatsoever. Well, what, do you, what do you suspect has been hidden? I believe that 
The, it has been and why would we want to lift up the skirt the to discover what it might be? Well, we're saying lift up the skirt again. I don't believe you're missing what I'm saying. Well, Lifting a... up the skirt again, as the scripture says, raising the skirts of the garment. I'll say it once more for you, and only once more. Uh -huh. has to do with revealing the history, the hidden history. When you lift up someone's garments, then you show their shame. You show up their private parts, that which they normally hide from the rest of the world. I'm not dealing with organs under the garment. I'm dealing Just with the organ parts. of slavery and those parts that have been kept private from the masses of the people. We are in New York City. It means that I speak the truth. I speak to the pain and hurt of the masses of black people. Uh -huh. I speak that which many of them wish they could say. That's why they cheer and well, applaud. Speak to Mrs. Goodman. And I speak that also. Speak to which Mrs. Many Goodman. of them only whisper behind closed doors. I think it is very arrogant to put this on the screen and for you and for others to attempt to tell me one of the Holocaust victims of the African Holocaust, displaced in the death and decadence of the diaspora of the Western world after having been robbed and raped and murdered to tell me how to hurt. These are strong words that you put on the screen, but you cannot tell the aggrieved and the victim as I was talking to Brother Malik Zulu Shabazz, the young student warrior from Howard University, and we were going over this. And we said, how do they expect to tell we who have suffered so much how we should speak? When you're hurt, you'll say faggot, you'll say cracker, but you don't want to give me time to say where these terms came from and how they apply yes. to your people well, here in America. You see this too. If it is true that I don't want to give you time to explain the etymology of these words, it is also true that you apparently don't want to respond to my question regarding the loved ones of two Jews who lost their lives yes, to, to stop the diaspora of the black people. I don't know. Do you have any? I don't know why they were there, and you don't know why they were there. But really? I must say this. So you're, you're I wondering whether this. they were there for your people. I'm not wondering at all about them. What are you? I'm concerned with the suffering and the pain of the masses of black people. No one wants to pay reparations. The Jews received over a hundred billion dollars in reparations and gets four billion annually. A Holocaust museum was set up for them on this soil for over two hundred million dollars and they get two twenty one million annually just for operating expenses. But the Catholic Church, the Pope, the Jews, the Arabs, white people in general, no one wants to pay reparations to these, the sons and daughters of Africa. So I speak to them. I don't speak I speak to them. I don't speak to the family of those two Jews. There are too, too many of us for me to speak to them. You don't want to take any time to make any particular We've given statement. all the time we've been in America. Now the it's United time we do something for ourselves. The we United are the same people, Phil, that when you beat us and rearrange our eyeballs in the socket and rearrange our face and beat us and stomp us before the world, we're the same people that get up because God just made us with tender and sensitive hearts as his chosen people yeah. and say, well, can't we just get along? The United <laughs> The United States House of Representatives in an unprecedented action. I don't know whether there's a precedent for the U.S. House to take its time to debate and vote on the condemnation of a private citizen, but it has done that. 435 members of the House of Representatives debating the, uh, debating the condemnation of uh, Mr. Muhammad. Here, is two, uh, here are two members of the House on opposing sides. Uh, calling for the uh, censoring of Mr. Muhammad is Congressman Lantos, followed by Congressman Abercrombie, who, uh, Abercrombie, who makes a, a, a statement in behalf of free speech. Watch this, House of Representatives. On November 29, 1993, at Keene College in New Jersey, Mr. Khalid Muhammad, a senior representative of the Nation of Islam, delivered an outrageous and violent attack on the principles of racial, religious, and ethnic intolerance. 
His attempt to incite violence by preaching bigotry and hatred must be swiftly and forcefully condemned by this body. Governmental sanction against any speech, objectionable as it may be, is always suspect. Is always suspect. The Constitution has proven to be our strongest safeguard against the Mohammeds of the world. Let us respect and revere the Constitution of the United States and vote down this resolution. Uh, Congressman Abercrombie's uh, position did not carry. The final vote uh, by the House of Representatives on the matter of condemning Mr. Muhammad was 364, 361 yay, 34 nay. You have, sir, been condemned by the United States House of Representatives. I assume you are flattered by that action. I, I believe that my ancestors, I believe that the blood that cries out from the grave of my ancestors who went to an untimely death at the hands of the white wicked slave traders, I believe that they cry out, their spirit is around me and their spirit emanates from me. And I believe that as a righteous man of God, but as a freedom fighter and a revolutionary, it is one of the greatest honors that could be paid. Now, from that clip, I hope you understand why many of the white people in the audience were not really happy of the kind of things Khalid Mohammed was saying. Because he was speaking truth. He highlighted the fact that whites for many years have looked down upon blacks and this has really affected the relationship between blacks and whites. So... What he was speaking there made to me a lot of sense and this kind of speaking made him be hated by many people. In fact, he was censored by both houses of parliament in the United States and this really tells you what was happening here. Speaking truth to power made him rub shoulders with people in power and especially the Jews, Catholics and even white people did not really find a thing to share with him. You as the viewer, what is your opinion about what Khalid Muhammad is saying and that engagement in its entirety. What really do you pick out of that engagement? Please, if you're watching us for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And also remember to tell us your opinion down in the comment section. Like this video and share. Thank you and may the good Lord bless you. Goodbye.